the first rehab, he had like sober karaoke, and I like did a bit about it where I'm like, yeah, I don't want to like do the things that I was embarrassed to do drunk. Actually, sounds it's, like torture. It's like wow, so, it's like sober stripping. Activity, like sober, fuck a three, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> We are Organic here guys. with stand-up comedian Dan St. Germain. How you been, Dan? I'm great. First time here. Thank you for having me. I don't know why I screamed that just now, but thank you. Oh, yeah. You've never been on the show before. I really thought he had. Me too. We would have asked you a lot sooner. We just thought you had been. We've yeah. done a lot of uh, podcasts together, okay, but just never not this, this one. one. No. I really well, try to do as few podcasts as possible, but yeah, back in the day, I've done- I've into mine at times. Yeah, I've, do- I've, done, I've done one in the past, but I've got a lot better just absolutely. A- after COVID, I just was like, I did- who's ever podcast during COVID because it didn't matter. Yeah. And then after that, I was like, yeah, not saying no to pretty much everyone now. Yeah. I love yeah. saying no to podcasts. It's my yeah. favorite thing. Do you say no, Dan? Uh, I'm not in a position where I can say no <laughs> to anything. I'm not uh, really either. I just somebody, don't do things I like. If somebody in the Port Authority has a booth, I'll <laughs> go do it right now at this point. I got to push the special. So uh. whatever, guys. If it's like, if somebody like hits me up and it's like they have 30 followers. Oh, I'm sorry. And they have like 30 followers and they're like, hey, I'm new at stand up. Then I try to find ways to yeah. get, get yeah. out of it. But even if they're really nice, I'll do it. You know, because yeah. I'm like, I don't want to like you never alienate know. the f- fucking four f- fans I have. You right. Know? Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Well, you're about to get one more, probably. Thank at you. Least. Thank you. Welcome, yeah. guys. We fuck nation. How, to how Dan you, guys, we fuck nation. I like that. Dan, remember, um, I'm going to give you a throwback memory. I think he does. I think he mentioned it while you were in the bathroom. I didn't know if you were going to Threatening. You said, I hope your boyfriend dies in a car accident. I did. That's actually very funny. (laughs) I did. I was offended at the time because I loved him, but uh, that's hilarious. But by the way, uh, (laughs) just to anyone who's listening, uh, I was single then many years ago. Uh, I'm married now. Uh, But yes, I did do that. I uh, (laughs) really uh, threw it. I threw it out there by throwing your boyfriend in front of a bus. Yeah. That's so funny. (laughs) Did Um, you really feel that in your heart? Like if if the next day he, she had texted and been like, oh my God, he Damn. manifested his death. Like, would you would have you felt like, guilty? I would have felt guilty. Or like a powerful witch. For sure. Well, I don't think if, she, if she, that had happened, she would have been like, fuck you, you yeah. killed my boyfriend. You're a murderer. Mm, um, yeah. So I don't think that I would have been, if she was like, hey, I killed my boyfriend, then maybe that would be a different situation. Right. But no, at the time, I think at the time the next day I was like, oh, what drunken uh, dumb thing that I do. <laughs> and usually I had a list uh, and I was like, oh, okay, so uh, the text apology to Christina is 135 today <laughs> and uh, everyone had... <laughs> Everyone at Buffalo Wild Wings is 155. Let me so make funny. sure that I put one in after another. Uh, uh, did you actually physically write a list of things that you had to make amends for? I have before. Decimation. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I did mean, you I do have, it? When I was, most of them, yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, but it's like one of those things where it's like living, like I, I'm just back from rehab again. So it's like, oh, shit. there's like a new list every time, you know? Right. The making um, amends thing is interesting. Like what AA, what does AA say that it's the benefit of that? I, I, I can understand logically. The the clear the wreckage of your past. And it's yeah. for, it's most, it should be more for them than you. Oh. That's the thing. Oh, I thought, so it's oh. like, if it's a situation where you shouldn't reach out because they don't want you to reach out, you have that don't discernment. reach out. Yeah. yeah. Right, 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 right. So, um, but it's like one of those things where it's supposed to be like a living thing anyway, where it's like, you know, at the end of your day, if you're like, I was shitty to this person, I should like text this person and say, hey, I'm sorry that I was shitty yeah. to you. But I'm not like, I still go to meetings, but I'm not like an AA guy either. Yeah, so right. it's like, it's it's one of those things. But yeah, it's just kind of like keeping yourself... I guess accountable. Um, right. But I think you can just do that as a normal person. Like if you don't apologize as a normal person, you're mm-hmm. like, that's kind of shitty. You're kind of like a psychopath. Right. <laughs> well, a psychopath or like, you're just ashamed of the, of how you behaved and you yeah. don't want to address it. That's true. Cause there's some people like, a, like one person in particular I can think of that. I'm like, I owe that guy an apology, but I have not apologized cause I'm a little too embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. I look over and your producer has like a black eye. <laughs> 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 on his head, he's like, "Sorry, Eric, you're such a bitch." <laughs> um, what, ha, what? Have you had a rock bottom? I've had, unfortunately, I've had a few. Let's take a tour uh, of your rock bottoms. I should, I should, I should, could have a whole book of rock bottoms. This past time, it was that I. Uh, I did the bonfire and I was, I had like had nine drinks before. The bonfire is a podcast it's for a, those listening. Yeah, it's Wait, a, nine. And I thought that that was, I was like, oh, I've only had nine drinks. I'm fine. Only? Only nine or what 10. What time was it? 
Don't it was like 4.30 or 6, oh, wow. 6 p.m., something like that. And uh, I was like, I'm going to get away with it. And then my uh, writing partner, comedy partner, Dan Sutter, texts me immediately when I'm done and goes, were you just drunk on the bonfire? Like immediately I knew. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. So there was that and amongst a couple other things. But it was like, you know, not to get heavy. Well, the out, no, whatever. Get I'll get heavy. Guys, we I, um, my mom died a little bit over a year ago and we found, so you know, it's OK. We're kind of still in the middle of it. Ordeal wise, oh, and shit. we yeah. found out some facts about the death oh, that <gasps> day, and I hadn't shit. been drinking, and that kind of like precipitated yeah. me to like a week long oh, shit. binge. Totally, um, totally. So totally. yeah, it was kind of heavy. I'm not going to say that was an excuse, but that is why it happened, <sighs> right? Um, and. Uh, yeah. yeah, a lot of times when sobriety is hanging on by a thread, it takes a stre- like the stressful event is the well. If I'm really sober, then I won't lean into this right. drug or whatever the or alcohol again. But yeah, it's it's too easy to slip for I sure. Feel. And I was like smoking pot constantly for like the last five years, so it's okay. like that was just, which I don't. I don't consider that the same as drinking, but it's 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 a sub it's a mind altering substance. For it's sure. a mind altering substance, and yeah. it's definitely it's the same in the sense that like I don't want to feel something today. Totally. So let me let me put this thing on so well, I don't have to deal with it. No stoner like calls somebody and says you're a fucking piece of shit. You know, no. like, stoner behavior is more docile for sure. Like I there was a year that I had scream crying and I smoked weed a lot during the day, which I don't ever do because I was like mm-hmm. I had rage. Weed is I I find really good for rage. Age. Yeah. So. But then the problem is, is that you don't, it depends on who you are. Like yeah. for me, it was just like, you're just constantly like putting that away. So I was just. Uh, right. Cause like, then you're not learning how to get through the rage. You're just learning how to suppress the rage. Right. right? Yeah. And it was the same thing with benzos too. Cause I was addicted to those for a while. So I was like, benzo uh, like, like, be, like Xanax or okay. uh, Quanapin. Right? Yeah. Or, um, Valium. Yeah, so anti-anxiety drugs. So it's like more of those, I don't want to just feel whatever I'm feeling. Let me turn on an air conditioner in my body that just cools everything totally. down. But weed is the one, I mean, I've only been sober this time, like four and a half months. Yeah. But that's the that's, one that I do that's miss awesome. quite yeah. a bit. So you're now, you're, you're completely <laughs> I don't, sober. I'm not doing anything, but yeah. a lot of trans fats. That's about it. <laughs> right. Anything else I'm not doing. How long were you sober from alcohol this last time when you relapsed? Well, the problem is my mom died over a year ago and I was on and off. I'd have three weeks and then go back off and Uh, then three weeks and then go back off. So I wasn't like, I I would, uh, it was probably like two months, like, uh, like September was what the last time I drank. And then like two months later. So I I had about two months. But wasn't there a long, wasn't there a period of time when there was like years in there? Yeah. I've had, I've had had times where I've had three years, three years twice. Right. Oh, that's great. So like. I had three years when I was in New York and then I had three years when I was in LA. So, and things definitely got better. So it's, the, yeah. you know, the only thing that you deal with is that you get bored, especially without weed. So yeah, you get super bored. My, my partner is a very high functioning alcoholic and yeah. like he, we've talked about this on the show before. Alcohol doesn't affect me this way, but affects him this way. Is he still and drinking or no? No. So okay. he's been, he's been nine, yeah, a couple months, uh, completely sober. And, uh, but like when he drinks, it's like coffee to him. Like it makes him energized and more mm-hmm. s- like he's already very social. I'm like, damn, if booze affected me like that, I probably would have an alcohol problem because yeah. it just makes me want to go to bed. Um, but he was saying to me, he's like, I just, I'm bored. Like I'm bored. And yeah. so uh, I also was going to mm. say, um, I was watching a lot of Oprah videos on YouTube the other day. And one of the things she said was, um, actually, no, there's this book called What Happened to You. That was, that was really profound that she co-wrote with a psychologist. And uh, she said, conquering an addiction is some of the most highest spiritual work anybody will ever do in their lifetime. And I don't think she's ever, I don't think Oprah's had an addiction, maybe with food stuff. She had food, food stuff, yeah. Yeah, um, food addiction for sure. But, uh, but I was like, oh, that's really interesting. And so I'm curious, like your state now, you know, you're four months sober, uh, right. with all the things, how, like how, w- what's the traffic like in your head? I don't want to drink right now. I don't want to do any hard drugs right now. I do want to smoke weed right now. Yeah. And I think it's because there are things that I don't want to be feeling right now. Yeah. Um, and I am back in therapy, so that's good. And I do have a psychiatrist. Um, we're really getting into it on this podcast. But yeah, I- um, yeah, I warned I'm, you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why you warned me. But yeah, so I, I feel like that sometimes I just want to fucking break. Yeah. You know, like I, w- I don't want to like, it's not that I want to vent like, or I want to like be like- you know, like, like spend three days in a motel somewhere where I blow my face off and I, you know, scream at the moon. I don't want that, but I do want 
Like I do miss smoking weed, playing two hours of video games, you know, mm. like not like so just like having numbing, my dog. Yeah. Next, yeah, like a numbing thing. Yeah, I do yeah. miss that. Um, spiritually, you know, I can't, I can't, my, my wife's not drinking. She's not smoking pot right now. She's not doing anything. In solidarity. In solidarity, yeah. which <laughs> at times I wish she was. And I was like, you know, sure you don't want to. Really? Yes, I've been like, doing that with my boyfriend. And then she'll like look at me and she's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to? And Why I'm is like, she being a bitch or something? No, she's not being a bitch at all. <laughs> you're she's like, like you really like, wish she would. Yeah, no, 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 no. She's not being, <laughs> I mean, in the sense that I want to, I sometimes want to smoke weed. So I'm like, oh. well, if she has a glass of wine, then maybe oh, I can, Oh, it will you know, give you the Yeah, it's like, you have a cookie. Now you're going to have a cookie, right? Totally. So that's the thing. Uh, for me, and it's always been substances. You know, I know people who like, you know, they want to like their thing is they want to gamble or they want to act out in a relationship and cheat. And for me, it's totally. always been drugs. I want to like, you know, get fucked up. Get fucked up. I just don't yeah. want to like deal with with life on life's terms. Yeah, um, I was going to ask you like mm. Gabor Mate has some fascinating. I don't even things. know Gazuntide. I have no idea who that is. <laughs> He's a great author. He's uh -huh. an incredible psychologist or Gabor psychiatrist. Mate. Uh, Gabor Mate, yeah. Um, he wrote a book uh, about addiction and he says, like, we always look at addicts like like they're this part of this low level of society, which is absolutely the opposite of true. Mm -hmm. Like some of the greatest artists of our time were at it, like, you know, and, and we, we the way we approach addiction is so backwards because we always say, like, what you're doing is wrong. Your behavior is wrong. What's wrong with you, you know? And it's like, well, no, what's right about your addiction? Meaning, right. what do these drugs give you that you don't have Otherwise, that is something that you want. That's something good, mm -hmm. good for you in quotes. And it's so it seems like the numbing is the thing. I think that that's the case. Yet yeah, I think it's just, you know, like I'm a very work first person, and if I'm not working, I'm like, what am I doing? Sure, and me so too. I always associate like being able to like get drunk or or smoke a joint as like, oh, this is like my recreational time. Like I don't have like. I don't have the same, like, I don't have, I'm not part of like a pickleball league. Oh, I'm not. That's actually pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't sing karaoke. Maybe I should, but those are yeah. the things I probably should be I was gonna replacing say hobbies, it with more. Like yeah, for hobbies sure. that you actually like doing? Yeah, I are, mean, are for sure. Potent. That's the thing. I mean, I love my dogs. I love hanging out with my wife. And those are like, and I mean, as we know, because we all do a lot of shows here, it's like when you have a night off, a lot of the times you just don't want to do anything. Totally. You just kind of want to like just veg. veg out. But, yeah. um, yeah, so I think like uh, I, I think trying to add new stuff to the routine should be where I'm going in the next like the next couple of weeks. I'm so busy anyway; it doesn't really matter. But yeah. like eventually, when I have downtime, um, it's to do that kind of thing for sure. Can I ask you um, what feelings are you running from? Do you know? As somebody think, who struggled you know, with addiction and ran from very specific feelings, that's, yeah, I, I ask I, from that. Place. I never think I'm enough for sure. Mm. Um, I think that almost the one thing that I think I think is common with almost anyone who's had a drug and alcohol problem is you feel like the other. You feel different from everybody else. I had that from when I was a kid and I was getting yeah. picked on to like being someone who has friends and a wife. And, you know, like so it's like, what you know, because it was interesting because it was or when I was like lonely, I was like, oh, I'm married to a wonderful person. Now I have three dogs. I have great friends, you know, and I'm like and I still have that other feeling. I still have that like. I feel like I'm cut off from, like something's different about me, something's wrong about me. Mm -hmm. um, that's usually where all addiction stems from. I think so, yeah. yeah. I think that's the thing that like, like I'm not enough. Yeah. Um, so those are the things. And and and, and I and I and my mom suffered from the disease, so I think that uh, I had also, mm. you know, there's some Al-Anon shit in there. And um, you Can know, I my ask? whole family, my grandpa died from it, my mom died from it. So it's like I have living examples mm. of, you know, what's what's in store for me. Ah. Um, so I, I I definitely think that like, yeah, there's like an element of feeling like, you know, the alien. As I look at alien stickers on your guys' laptop. Yes, I am an alien. Actually, yeah. um, you, uh, if you're not comfortable about it, I'll just yeah, say yeah, skip. Sure. But I'm curious what you found out about your mom after. That would be so funny if I go, "How big are your balls?" Like it's like I told him. <laughs> 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 I was like, "What are we talking? How big is your butthole?" Um, my my mom, I, I I can't go specifically into this, and I didn't. I would have told you that beforehand, but she had she was definitely suffering. This doesn't involve her death is different, but she was suffering from elements of alcoholic dementia. Uh, no. We did have to uh, put her in an assisted living facility when she was in her sixties, way earlier than she should have been. Yeah, um, some of that was due to the marriage with my dad and her ending, um, and. Um, there was a lot of, 
you know, I don't think my mom could, you know, again, she couldn't handle life on life's terms. And, you know, this was, you know, she kind of had a a bunch of bad things happen in a row and, Mm. um, and, you know, she was hurt. So she hurt herself and she hurt, certainly hurt other people in her family. Um, so yeah, I think that those things, you know, like, and then she always just medicated through alcohol. Like my dad, you know, my dad drinks too much at times, but she, you know, like, you know, like my, my grandpa died with a bottle in his hands. My grandma had alcohol problems and, you know, that whole side of the family, there's a lot of addiction, not even, you know, not even speaking that I'm people I'm not even covering that I'm not as close to. So like for whatever, for whatever reason that has been the salve, you know? Yeah. There's been a lot of arguments about like his addiction genetic and th- like the guy Gabor that I was mentioning earlier. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, I don't really think it is, but I think it's more powerful to witness your parent handle something with a drug, for example, or handle something mm-hmm. with a temper or handle something like I got things from my father. Uh, I, th- I would just, uh, presume from my father, but I'm not genetically related to him. So I'm like, oh, OK, so this is nurture. Like nurture is huge. And right. Kids are so sensitive. Do you think that you like. Like there's certain ways that certain ways that your dad deals with stuff that you deal with them the same yeah, way. Yeah, temper. Yeah, a lot of rage. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not 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 like being a little too scared of feelings. Um, uh, it sounds like your wife, from the thing, the few things that you've mentioned, is handling this like what, like a champ. Like She's really been great. Being a nice yeah. Partner. So I'm very. I mean, I'm very lucky. I I, I lucked out in love. I married well. Yeah, uh, I was. Go- I was kind of going to ask, great. like, uh, how many, like, how how long have you been married to her? We've been. We'll be five years in October, but Aww. we were together for like we were together for like six. Or, we dated like seven years ago, but it was like casual, and then we got you know together. Like a year after that. Were you sober when you met her? Like what? Cause I was. When I'm, I met her, I oh, was. Nice. And then the first time that you relapsed with her, because I'm, I'm, I'm so I was curious. Not, I did not realize with her, we were, we were broken up. Okay. Because we were kind of like dating. Oh. Um, so I was that, I, no, that was in LA. I had gone out and part of, partially as I was prescribed anxiety medication. And I'm not going to just blame it on that. I made a decision to go out. But uh, I think that that kind of led to it in sure. some ways. Um, and she's dealt with. You know, she's, you know, and it, it is kind of the reason I'm also staying, you know, sober at this point is that she's like, you know, had to, had to deal with some of it. And I yeah, can't, as a partner you know, does. yeah, as a you partner, it's a lot of bullshit. A partner so. can't be unaffected by another no, partner's addiction. Of course not. And she's, you know, at times I think she's like, you know, that's her story to tell, but she's like had, you know, she's probably uh, partied too much at times in her life. I wouldn't put her in the same category as me, as me at all, but um, she's, you know, flourishing without it right now. And um, yeah, so I, I think that her dealing with that, that was that was definitely, she likes me a lot better when I'm not on anything for sure. Is that motivation for you to? Yeah. Because sometimes it's like, that's nice to use that type of motivation when your partner sees the best in you. You're like, well, I can't see the best in me right now, but I'm going to take your word for it because you yeah. married me. Yep. I think that there's definitely, there's definitely an element of, I can't, you know, I'm, I have a family now. I don't have kids, but I have a wife and dogs and I can't, you know, I can't just uh, do the shit that I did in my twenties anymore. You know, yeah. I can't Amen, just, sister. Yeah. Unfortunately, sometimes I want to, oh, yeah. I really want to, you know, I don't, I want to like not be, you know, accountable to anybody. And that that's not in the sense of like, I want to be like, Oh, I want to go to Vegas and be single. Like it's more right, like, right, I just right. want to like freaking go to a best Western for a week and Did nobody you... interrupt must be such a pizza man or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That would be nice. I wonder if there's like a correlation between <laughs> p- kids who grew up with parents where the parents didn't take responsibility for themselves, meaning like they they kind of fell into like l- the addiction and was swallowed by it or mm-hmm. had mental illness that they didn't keep in check or whatever the fuck it is. And it's like the kid never got to be a kid. So, so I feel like sometimes when the kid, that kind of kid grows up, they're like, somebody else hold it together for once. I, let me be the fucking mess for once. Right. There's kind like I, I used to feel like that and uh, I would get mad like having conversations about like, Christina, maybe you should chill on the substances. I'm like, ah! you know, because it's like, give me a rest. It's your you coke know? dealer you're telling it to. to <laughs> Fortunately, I was very happy to learn I do not like cocaine. That was the one drug, that's the only drug I don't like. Bro, thank um, God. Yeah, but, because I know Especially that one Especially now with fentanyl and everything. Yeah, yeah, rough. yeah, it's yeah, rough. yeah. But um, there's, there's plenty of other drugs that I love, but, um, yeah, I wonder if too, if it's part of that, it's like a, a child that carries a lot of emotional weight prematurely, mm-hmm. um, just wants to fucking relax and numb out, um, more so than the average bear. 
Yeah, I don't know. I think so. I think like the problem is with high school is that whenever I would do it, I was never having like six drinks. It was always like, let me get fucking bombed, you know, mm. let me like, and then I would, I would have a disaster. I would put myself in harm's way. Or Did you just say like six drinks like a light night? Right. <laughs> right. That's that would be a wild. light night. I wish <laughs> if I could stop at eight, I would still be drinking, you know? Yeah. Wait, um, what, what's like the most amount? <laughs> Men can just drink differently. Like what are you they drinking? Really like, well, also, what was your drink of choice? Well, the last time around I was like fooling myself. I'm like, I can't touch whiskey. So <laughs> what I'll drink is beer and rum, yeah. you know, and I would have like 16 girly drinks, but it's like, I'm drinking them like like I'm on like a you know, having like a Mai Tai or something yeah, but I'm like, yeah I'm having a Bahama Mama <laughs> like, it's, like I'm a Buffett. cop mourning a dead partner or something like that well that's very interesting because I there are a couple people I know who drink beer and are alcoholics and think because their drink of choice is beer that they're not alcoholics and it is hard to watch it's hard to watch the, yeah. the amount of denial that you have to be living in yeah. I don't like, what do you do? Who started the rumor that beer is not, you can't be an alcoholic um, on beer? Beer companies did. Like, what? Beer, companies beer companies did, did. yeah, for sure. You only got like 4% you saying alcohol, so do do what you want. <laughs> like, if you've seen beer commercials, yep. no one looks like they drink beer who's in a beer commercial. Like, yeah. if you look at right. Bud Light True. or Miller, it's all like, yeah, it's like, like, like you look like a DJ. Yeah. Like, what are you doing right. here? Well, you're that's not, why I like that Shane Gill, they hired Shane Gillis, because he looks like he drinks beer. He looks like he drinks beer. In the best way. I was like, amazing. Collab. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Like, but a lot of the times you'll watch him and you'll be like, this is like the weekend or something. Yeah. Right, you know? right, 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 right. Um, so, yeah, I uh, I don't know. I wish that I think that, that especially the IPAs now, because IPAs, you can get like I remember I was drinking a beer that was like. 13% oh, yeah. alcohol. And D I was like, well, what's beer? the difference between this and yeah. you know, like, so delirium and vodka tremens. soda? But yeah. Having an IPA is like having a fucking sandwich. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Like, With I, rye like, bread. Yeah, rye I'm, bread. I'm like, yeah. what is this? I can't, I, I, I can't even drink enough beer to get drunk on it. Cause if my yeah. stomach gets full first. So I'm always kind of like, like when someone can drink, you know, 10, 11 beers, I'm, I'm more impressed. Yeah. yeah. Like how did that, how did you even get that in there? Especially, yeah, I, th I can wish. do that with like a white beer, like Keystone Light or Coors Light or Bud Light. But, you know, if I'm having, you know, like uh, if I'm having an IPA, it's like, you know, I feel full, you know, yeah. six drinks in or something like I'm that. I'm on a diet. You know, I'm on a diet. <laughs> Only That's six for me. It, it adds, it add, you know, like I'm already overweight. So it's like, if I'll add, I'll mm. get like scary TLC fat. You know mm. what I mean? TLC special <laughs> fat. You know, where, you know, the fire department's like breaking a door down for me to leave. So, oh, uh, so you, okay. you, you, you get a show. Yeah, that's true. Like that's true. You know? I finally made it on TV. I finally made it on At TV. At my high points. I didn't get the Tonight Show, guys, but I am on 700 pounds and pregnant. <laughs> and pregnant. Somehow I'm pregnant. Was it your decision to go to rehab or was it? This time around it was. Okay. That's and then the empowering. last time inpatient, this was like my fifth time going. So it depends. Cute. Like a lot of the other times were outpatients. Um, and then the last time it was like to like try to get a girl back. And then like, as soon as I got back, she was like, yeah, I'm still not going to go out with you. <laughs> and I was like, which by the way, she was right. Um, you know, but like, that was my reasoning. And this time it was more like, all right, man, I'm going to be, you know, 40 and like, you know, like I don't, I, I can't like, <laughs> I can't like put it into the next gear in comedy at 50. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, so I have like only, I have this window. I mean, I'm going to be 40 in May. I'm 39 now. So I have like this window, you know? So I'm like, I really have to, you know, kind of like get my shit together now instead of like be worrying about this when I'm 55 years old or something. What's inpatient therapy like? In or uh, rehab just, rather. Uh, inpatient rehab is you're there, uh, you're staying there and yeah. outpatient is, you know, you can be doing it from home. But it's all day therapy? It's all day. It's all day therapy. The group well, um, group a therapy. A lot of group therapy. Um, then there's also like some activities. Oh, that's um, fun. What kind of activities? Some arti I did build a snowman this you did? last time around. Yeah, that's, that's on our nice. fridge still. Uh, <laughs> oh, paper snowman. <laughs> my sad rehab snowman. Wow. Uh, <laughs> he, sweet. A lot of group activities, like if I was uh, suffering from alcoholism, that would make me want to drink more. There are some, if the, to your if point, fun Corinne. Activities. Yeah, we're the first <laughs> rehab. They had, we had like, we had like sober karaoke and I like did a bit about it where I'm like, yeah, I don't want to like do the things that I was embarrassed to do drunk. You know, that's like sober. Away that it's like, actually sounds like torture. It's like wow. So, it's like sober activity, stripping. Like sober, fuck a three. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You're like, no, there's reasons. There's something I want to do drunk. Like, yeah. please. I don't need to revisit that sober. 
Thanks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. They should take like you know they should like rehabs. You should like interact with animals and stuff like that. Like we that did. Shit. We had equine therapy. Oh, yeah. the first oh one. nice. And they had a That's rehab. Nice. This past one, they had a rehab dog who was very <gasps> sweet. What kind of dog was it? Uh, it was a black lab. Oh my god. Which is the best. We have three dogs now, so that was that That's was amazing. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then we did have a rehab dance. I think because I was there. They have like the winter dance. I was there for Thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving meal was like incredible in rehab. Nice. Wow. Like one of the best. I was like having a panic attack all day. But then as soon as I got off my bathroom floor, I was like, oh, this stuffing's tremendous. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we uh, we had like a like a formal where it was like a dance. And it was just like nobody was nobody was dancing with each other. You know, like, no, that's not true. There was one guy who was like. Aww. Yeah, but he was like trying to like make it happen. Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? That's <laughs> a rehab no bro, no. Bro, that's a rehab no 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 rehab romance. Although it all ha it happens I mean, a lot. It's I never was happened. Say, I was like, people were fucking. Right? You definitely want to. Nobody fuck was in fucking. Rehab. I think this time around, but it has it has. Sure. My, my friend went and met his wife in fucking rehab, Good so it's for like them. you know. Yeah, it does happen. I mean, because if you don't have like it's so naughty, of course, yeah, and also you don't have anything else. But at that point, you're like, well, I can fuck. All I and have that'll, is I, yeah, that all that, you know, I yeah, can't being, do heroin. Yeah, exactly. When you can't do substances, the next best thing is like being addicted to a person. I mean, I actually yeah. enjoyed that more, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think that, I, I think that, I think that becomes a thing for a lot of people where it's afterwards, they're like, all right, well, sex then becomes a thing, you yeah. know? And it's like, for right now, for me, it's like like the one that's the hardest is food, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, How long? you can still do it, you know? Mm -hmm. You can cut off sex and drinking, but you still have to eat. No, I often yeah. think about that, that and yeah. I was like, yeah, I was like writing something about that. I mean, like not that, cause I don't have food addiction, but if there was something that I was like most, like my most challenging relationship as far as substance, it's definitely food. Yeah, for and, sure. And the thing is like, yeah, exactly. You can stop doing her heroin cold turkey, but you have to eat a little. You yeah, know? yeah. So how do you do you that? Just do the healthy heroin. <laughs> um, well, I'm not and it's, right and now. It's all around. I mean, I just got back from Dallas, where I went to like Terry Black's Barbecue and Whataburger and Mexican, and I was just, you know. Uh, but I'm, I overeat. My wife, who's like, you know, 105 pounds, is like, "Ooh, let me eat." And she'll like eat like a quarter of what I eat, <laughs> right? You know, and it's I'm like, like "We bird. are not the same." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. She'll like, "Ooh, it'll taste a banana pudding," rather than like just me with a gallon in a corner mainlining it in my fucking veins. So, do they nice. go over food addiction and rehab at all, or are they just concentrating? A on little the bit, yeah. There was some nutrition stuff there for sure. What I are mean, they? What are they presenting for food addiction there? I mean, they they went through a lot of like a lot of it, you know, it's not the number one thing they're focusing on. Sure. Honestly, unless unless you have an eating disorder and you're like cross addicted, so right. like if some Ooh, you know if some cross threat. addicted sounds so hot. If some <laughs> girl's like uh, you know like a bulimic on top of being an alcoholic, then she's probably going to have a much rougher road than right. if yeah. you were just one of those things. Right. Um, so they, they, it's not the primary. If you gain thirty pounds the first year, they're like, "That's fine." <laughs> if you're not, you know, oh. doing fentanyl, like you shouldn't. But it's better than if you right. were. Mm -hmm. You know, and then there are people too that will get like are, are really underweight, and then they'll come and then they'll gain like fifty pounds in rehab just because they haven't been eating for a year. Oh you know? shit! So. Um, I have two more logistical questions, mm -hmm. real quick. How long were you in the inpatient rehab, and how much was it? This time it was twenty one days, and I was on my wife's insurance, so <gasps> it was oh, it, it was worked covered? out great. Yeah. Oh, that's fucking Last fantastic! Time, oh yeah, I love hearing about insurance covering something. Yes, that somebody they, needs. They, it, it, but it's a little bit. It's it, it is stressful because you don't know like the only. Like okay, you have another three days. Okay, you have another three days because they only green light you for oh, like Jesus. three days each time. So in your head, you're like, oh my god, am I gonna break? Today's gonna be the day I get rejected. Yeah, I'm gonna be a yeah. But the last rehab I went to, it was like it covered. I ended up having to spend ten grand, and then like uh, insurance paid like twenty eight grand or something like that. Oh wow! So like that was. But then there's ones that are like. You know, sixty or seventy thousand dollars. Yeah, those are the ones sure. like for the celebrities, right? Yeah, the ones the celebrity the celebrity one I almost went to, I did not go to because of the oh, you know the, the what I was about to say which celebrity, but I don't think I should. But yeah, probably like they're, not. All, they're all there. Um, so yeah, it's uh, hopefully you have insurance that covers it, and a lot of the times they want to do outpatient because it's cheaper, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and uh, they can they can keep you on outpatient for like four months rather than inpatient. Um, did you have an aha moment while you were in therapy this go around? Was there any connection? I think there's like, uh, I think I have aha moments like every time in therapy, right? Yeah, Where that's it's great. Like, yeah, I, I, 
I mean, this time I'm just starting with a new therapist. My last guy was, he's actually was sober. He was, he was like an actor guy who was, I remember that uh, there was a Dick Wolf show called Cop Rock and it was like law and order, but musical. <laughs> That's awesome. And he had, his bottom was he like woke up the next day and he was in a Jeep that he had bought in a blackout Holy with a tiny, with both his ears pierced and oh. a tiny toy cup tea multi poo that he had oh, also. Oh, and he, he got a dog in a bag. He was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> That's a wrap for me and drugs. That's a wrap Buck for me. Buck sold him a junk man a dog. A and guy a who really needs to get rid of these dogs. It. Oh, my oh God. My God. So, yeah, I, I That's your therapist? Them. That was my therapist. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't afford him right now. Yeah, so I was like, that's on. a good therapist. I'm moving to on to someone that. else. I'm, I'm moving on to like a woman now. I've never had like a, a female. I've had a female therapist once. That's not true. Um, usually, I'm very good with gay men. I don't know why, because I'm the most like them besides... Uh, you know, enjoying uh, penis. What about yeah. she was gay? If she, I don't think that that would work either. I think a gay man really understands me. <laughs> no, but what, like what? Ab- like what about you? You said I'm the most I like. I don't know. You know, because you don't. You I connect mean, mostly with. I you don't feel seem very super gay to me. With I just feel very. My sponsor in L.A. was a gay guy. Mm-hmm. I, I mostly liked. LGBT meetings when I was in L.A. Like really, one. yeah. How interesting. Um, I. Yeah, I mean, I haven't like I've made out with the guys before. I did hook up with like, one guy once, like when I was nice. in college. Um, yeah, it was like the straightest way to be gay. But um, yeah, I did the same <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah I was I'll like, lick your vagina for a second. Yeah, can yeah. I do it? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. okay, I didn't do that. I to give like a handy, which is like might as well just not do anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, you really phoned in that. Yeah, I really phoned it in. I really phoned it in. But he wanted Tony, so I had like a oh. whole thing where I was like, man, jerked him off. I hook in. I hook the the one guy I hook up. With, I like hook up with like the LeBron James of gays, <laughs> and all sick. the women are like work at Guitar Center or Hardee's now, you know. So it's like it's, it's a real. I should have. I should. I would have stayed with cock if I could. Uh, um, but yeah, that didn't work. Yeah, gay gay makes more sense to me. Yeah, it just does. Yeah, yeah I don't know why I'm more connected. I don't know. I've always been. Do you have a lot of male friends? Do you have a lot of male friends? Yeah, straight male friends. I have a lot of straight male friends. You too. do. Yeah. Yeah, and you find no no like issue connecting with them emotionally, or do you just no, or you just not like anymore. hang? I don't think so. Uh-huh. I don't think I think those ones that kind of drop away now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But I have guy friends. I'll say I love you too. Which yeah. is, Good. Which is uh, I was uncomfortable for a little bit. Like you know who got me out of the uh, out of that for a little bit was was actually Soder. Soder soda to me, and I was like, oh, I love you too. And in the beginning, I felt like I always felt like there's gonna be like some angry great Santino dad. It was going to like beat me with a basketball when I did that. But I was like, no, you can say I love you and it's fine. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. fine. Um, but that Aww. took, it, that took a while to do that. Um, but yeah, most of my, like I saw one of my best friends in, I was at Dallas comedy club all weekend and I saw him and you no, know, I said, I love you. And that was fine. So that was wife too. But yeah. it took a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just got to get used to it. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's all like training your thoughts. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like when you're working on yourself, you, it's like going to the gym with your mind and going, okay, I'm the old thought patterns. We're going to reroute. We got to reroute. We gotta, and you just keep rerouting and rerouting until it sticks. You know? Yeah. Do you feel comfortable calling like one of your straight guy friends and having a conversation like, you know, about struggling with sobriety or do you feel more comfortable only talking about your wife with that? Uh, I talk, I can talk to other people who struggle with it. I was going to say Dan, uh-huh. Dan had and my had wife. Those are the two. Issues. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want to talk with them because those are the ones that aren't going to let me off the hook. You know, there are mm. certain people that I want to call that, you know, like this time around drinking and he's, I'm still friends with him now. I'm seeing him now, but he didn't know that I had a problem and I kept him as like my drunk friend. Totally. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, but now he, now he does. So, um, yeah, I had, I would definitely keep those. I would try to like partition a little bit. Yeah. I think for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was more strategic. I, I I only ask because it is like common in heterosexual relationships that the woman uh, just takes on the emotional burden of the man. And, and I think like yeah. if you could divvy up some of that responsibility to other people in your life, specifically not female friends, like right. it would just be better for society. And I also so it kind too. of trains men to like, you know, it's like you should be able to talk to your guy friends like because you they understand what it's like to be a guy. Like there are some yeah. things that only you guys are going to understand about one another. Yeah. The same as like we have girlfriends. Yeah, I think like I, I do think that like in the 1950s, like you could be like best friends with a guy and not know that they were depressed. Ever. Right. For <laughs> sure. Know? Absolutely. Um, and that's and that, that is one like sort of, I guess, evolution that's happened. But, you yeah. know, I think in general, people don't 
I think that, and I have also have to like, sometimes I like to, I, and I think all oh, comics do this a lot, like where I vomit out emotions, mm. but that I'm not really dealing with them. I'm just like, she oh, here I'm doing there. this you're and blah, blah, blah. Like, them, you're just, yeah, a, yeah. you're just like talking about the problem. You're not yeah. actually having someone challenge you on it or like, yeah. like going to the, you know, I mean, and that's kind of like, and we, and comedy rewards that kind of behavior, which mm. is in the beginning helps you stand out, but then it really helps stunt you, Yep. you know, where it's like, I'm a, you know, how many sets? to be seen. I'm a drunk. I'm a slut. I'm an asshole. I'm a, you know, and it's you're like wearing like a badge. Yeah. yeah. You wear like, like a badge and it's like, okay, yeah, that's funny. But like, what are you doing to work on? That right. Too, you know? um, right. Yeah. So that takes, um, you know, and that's, that's hard. It, that's hard to fucking want to fix too, you know? Cause I think we too, we have this thing too, where it's like, well, if I fix everything, then I'm not going to be particularly interesting right. to anybody. Um, well, that's part of the fear, though. I think you still will, and you still have your his, you know, your history can always be be, be the story. But like, you're not gonna have any friends left if you yeah, if you don't fix sure. it. <laughs> if you don't fix and it, and there's so many interesting things to get into once you're sober and like kind of have uh, of the right mind. Yeah, like aliens. Yeah, like mm -hmm. there we go. Yeah, like they're ghost here hunting. Now. Yeah, they are. Oh, yeah, they are. So you've been married for five years. What has been your favorite part of being married? Like, so, like a little, I like a little more specific, not just like support, like. Well, um, you know, I mean, like the hang's great, man. The hang? You know, like. Is it I, different when you're married? Um, yeah, I think so. I think that there's less of a, you know, I mean, like when you're dating, it's just there's like a lot of an element of like it being a show every time you go out, mm, you know? Yeah. And I, I feel genuinely comfortable with my wife. And, um, you know, most of the people that I know that the relationships that last that I've known and, you know, I'm are the ones where they can feel comfortable, like completely comfortable yeah. around this person. That's not the ones that don't last are not like, oh, we had this amazing pheromone like connection. And it was like the movie Garden State or some shit <laughs> oh like my that. God. It's that was like, my dream relationship. <laughs> right. For so when you're long. in your 20s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, is, it is because it's part it's a drug, you know, Heck and you want God. that. And it's not, you know, like, um, like, I forget this. There's this one writer, Joel, man, I, mean, I forget who it was now, but he was like, yeah, I can just feel, I can be boring around my wife. That's how I know oh, that it's yeah. the one. Like a lot of people are like, you know, like all the other stuff, like, yeah, it's like, dude, does she call me on my shit? Absolutely. But like, that's great. You know, and I need that, but it's not like the same I think that that's the, um, and we have like three really cute dogs. We love watch, watching horror movies together. We love, uh, you know, like the same Tree thing. We dogs. love, you know, laughing and it's one of those things where like, I think I'm her favorite person to annoy too. <laughs> so like, I think that that keeps it. There's, there's a lot of really good things. Um, and I also think that I, it took me a while, but for a while I was trying to like look for somebody who was withholding because I wanted to recreate the same relationship I had with my mom growing up. Mm -hmm. And then, and not just her, but I think like someone I dated also before her, I was like, no, let me do the opposite. And like, go for somebody who actually like really likes me. Cause like, I think too, and I think that like comedy and, and showbiz stuff makes that worse. Cause we always want the thing we can't get. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you do that with romantic relationships, you're fucked. Recipe yeah, no, no, no. Like my therapist you know? like is very clear. She's like the most important thing about a relationship is like the person really likes you. Cause it's yeah. like been a kind of running joke. Like my favorite thing about people, like, like one of my favorite quality about someone is like, if they really like me right. and everyone always makes fun of me for that. They're like, Oh, no, you're a like great. a narcissist. And I brought, so I brought it to my therapist and I said, and she goes, no, that's the fucking way that you should be looking at relationships. Sure. She's like, you're doing it right. And everyone else is projecting on you because they, they're, they can't do it that way. And I was like, all right. I just want to make sure because it seemed to me yeah. like very logical that you should be pursuing someone who sees you in a po the most positive light. You know, I, I was thinking about the it's you know this girl that I dated in my twenties. We went on three days, right? And like physically, she's what I she looked like the lead singer of churches, which like at the time was like <laughs> what I wanted. But I was Wait, like, like I was thinking about this like dating, and I was like, I think that girl fucking hated me, and we went out like <laughs> you probably three loved times, it. and I kept going back. I'm like, Ooh. I would never do that like that would be like like let's say my wife divorced me please don't uh, tomorrow <laughs> like I would like that would be the last the last thing that I would be doing oh, is like so be much. like oh let me go search for the fucking 
Yeah. You know, like that, that well, one I also girl I can't though, get. You what know? is the girl? Sexy dream girl. Oh, she's hot. Yeah, no, she's I know you're super hot. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, also. She's cute. I also wonder. It's not my type now, but it was, she was cute. I, I wonder, she's, like, what is wrong with that woman, too, though? You know, why is she going out with someone she hates? I think that's it's also strange. I think, I think that, like, because there's, there's probably a guy that she really likes that. Um, oh, women be doing that. You know, that women she's like, I need, I need to have, I need to know that like, I have somebody who's worshiping me because the guy that I really want. Oh, and you were worshiping her? It was want, that excessive? Yeah. I don't know if it, it was Later that. It wasn't that. that obsessed. I have worshiped girls before. It was in that particular Wait, case. It wasn't. Ooh, what's it like when you worship a girl? What does that look like? Well, it has nothing to do with the girl a lot of, course, of the time. Yeah. It has to do with this fucking idea of this person that you put in your head that isn't real. It's a uh, lot of it, it's a lot of pressure to be worshipped was the real thing I was just going to say. But I, I, I do I yeah. do mean that because it, it because you're so right. It's never you. They are worshipping the idea of you that they created in their head, and then it puts a, well, it puts pressure on you to live up. Uh, and then I go well, and I and then at the end of so many things, I, I go, you created that. I didn't ask you to do that. Yeah, I scary. like who it's I also am. Scary. I didn't. Yeah. I'm, I go. Yeah. I don't know what you're trying to heal. You know. And right. I also hate when people put on an act for me because I go, well, I just felt fell in love with someone who. Does doesn't exist. Right. That's rude. Yeah, that's rude. <laughs> My AI boyfriend. To put it cool. lightly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, like, right. yeah, I think that people, there's a common misconception with like, oh, well, if it's positive treatment, it's good. But it's like, no, the, either extreme is bad. And and, yeah. and and the person is right to not take either extreme personally. Yeah. This all has to do with what's going inside of you. But it, it takes, I, you, I really think you need to like have a moment where you say to yourself, what do I really want? What is good for my sure. person, rather than like just hoping I meet that person? Because if you do that, your 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 internal navigation is already fucked. Yeah, you have to reset that on your you own before you go back out there again. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, did you have a list of things? Because like I, one of the things you mentioned is like you like you like that she calls you on her shit, which I hear a lot from men. But mm -hmm. I, as a woman, also need someone who calls me on my shit. So I appreciate. Right, and I do that too. I yeah, appreciate for sure. that for sure. Uh, and like, what else were you looking for? Like things that you realized along the way. Like I need this in a partner to for it to function. Well. For a while, I didn't want anyone. I did not care about a sense of humor, and I did not want to care about any. That's popular for men. Who's, uh, you know, I didn't. I didn't at first I, I was like, you did it? And no. then like, right. Yeah, yeah. And then I realized like, oh, it's a lot easier when you can laugh with somebody. <laughs> like, oh, shitload easier. Right. Right. So I didn't care about that forever. Mm -hmm. um, so did you date? women with zero senses of humor? I have before. Ugh. Sometimes I would. Like got Sometimes offended by shit? No sense of Most humor? Most of the women that like... I've dated pretty seriously have been pretty funny with the exception of like maybe like one. Um, but it wasn't something, <laughs> I, know what that I didn't think did. like, I had this idea that I wanted, I did want like kind of an ice princess, I think for a little bit. A nice pr an an ice princess. princess. Wait, what's, oh, like yeah. it's mean? People get yeah. fucking horny for ice princesses. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ooh, yeah. I got yeah. the ice princess for Halloween Yeah, yeah, year. be the ice princess. Yeah. Um, but Can you describe what an ice princess? Like Sarah me. Michelle Gellar. I mean, I'm an ice, and, um, I, yeah, I'm an ice princess, but the thing is, and then like I've worked a lot on not being it in relationships, but the thing is people, people uh, go after an ice princess and then uh, when they're in the relationship with the ice princess, they go, oh, but why are you being an ice princess? I thought that was just like the way you catch men and, and like you go, no, mm -hmm. this is like, to the core who I am. Right. So why are you going to bring home an ice princess and then expect me to turn into a trad wife? Like it's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah. Like you, you, you selected something from the store and then you go, why is this the thing I selected from the store? Why didn't it morph into something else? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I don't know where, I don't know where that like comes through. It's just like, just the same as like women are constant being like constantly being told like you can't change men. Like men need to learn the same thing about women that they yeah, go after. I, I think that like, you know, there's things, you know, when you get in a relationship, you should always be changing. Yeah, like evolving, just as a human yeah. being, you should yeah. always be evolving. And you should, you know, like, and when you get into anything, you're like, okay, these are some things that I don't like about this person that are probably not going to totally change, but I need, we need to work on them, you know, mm -hmm. because, and I think, I think that that's in every relationship, you should have that. But the idea of fundamentally changing the person. I mean, that's just a fool's errand, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, for sure. Because I go, Oh, the thing you liked about me is that you really couldn't like, you couldn't get through to me. And, mm. and now you're mad that you can't get through to me exactly. when that was the initially the thing that you liked about yeah, me. I yeah, go, yeah. Well, it's, it's all about that unfair. person. It's unfair. <laughs> it's all about that person's own like goals and their, their like crooked self-esteem attached to the goal. And yeah. but to the, the point of like, we don't want to, because sometimes I'll get, my wife or she'll like, uh, 
where she'll be like, hey, you want to wear this? And it's like a very preppy thing to wear. And I'm like, you're not going to change me. She's like, that's fine, but I don't want you to wear a fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt yeah, to my friend's fair. friend at this formal thing. She's that like, is super we've got to meet in the middle yeah, somewhere, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. She seems like she has a good head on her shoulders, yeah, she, your wife. She, she does. You know. And I remember when I saw pictures of when you guys got married, you posted pictures. I'm like, I don't like, I usually don't get a lot from a picture of a person, but I'm like, she just feels grounded to me. She did. Well, it's also <laughs> next to me and I have like a giant hair and a beard. Everyone looks kind of grounded. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's like Wednesday Adams or something, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. What do you feel like if we were talking to your wife, what do you feel like she would say is the most positive effect you've had on her? Like what is it that really stands out that you bring to her into her life? I can calm her down mm-hmm. probably better than anybody. Nice. You know. How do you how do you calm a woman down? I'm so yeah, how do you I mean, wrangle I'm not a her? woman, a person everyone's different. So it's like Well, how do you yeah. calm her down specifically? I literally go like, we need to like, let's calm slow down. <laughs> I fucking I smack her. Around a bit, bitch. Throw her around a bit. Just, punch fucking, her. <laughs> just bounce her head against. No, I was like, let's let's slow down. Let's mm-hmm. like go through this. Like wait, we're not logically thinking about this right now. You know, it's like kind of that yeah. kind of thing, mm-hmm. which she does for me too. So yeah. it's like we were both it's very, very good at that because mm-hmm. I think she's dated. She could never like she could never date a guy, and she has before who were kind of like her, who were more like like if she dated someone who was on her ass for cleaning, she would. She would murder them. You know what I mean? I like see. She, yeah, like, yeah. She's yeah. much more comfortable with me being like, but if somebody was neater than her, she would like not deal with that at oh, all. Oh, right. So Everyone's like as much so as she gives me shit, and I am a fucking slob, yeah. as, as she gives me shit about being a slob, like if she was with somebody who was like, because there's been times where I've gone like, like I've gone like, hey, can you pick that? And she'll get like furious. <laughs> and that, that's like once in a blue moon where I'll do that. The only thing I do yeah. now is like, she'll go after me for something. And then I'll, in my head, I'll like document. I'm like, well, two weeks ago, you did the <laughs> same thing with a Coke bottle. And I didn't say anything. And right. she's like, oh, you know, like been sitting on that so, one for a while. Like that, I do. I do. Yeah, I sit on times where she's sloppy just so I can be sloppy. <laughs> and I like chronicle them in my head, um, yeah. which it, is probably it, unhealthy. One but. of the beautiful things that I love about like a long term relationship is like you do get to know how to deal with each other and it's so nice when someone deals with you in a way that they're not like shaming you for your behavior or right. or anything like that they're like no I know your pattern and I know I just gotta wait this amount of time and you'll completely for you you'll co- you completely change your mind yeah <laughs> I know I know the time she needs to eat that's a big thing. I think that's every feeding time yeah. where, where I'm like, you're being, I'll be like, like, well, she'll get a little mean. And I'm like, you haven't eaten yet. Yeah. We, have, we have to get something. <laughs> yeah. f- f- I need to like, I'm like, we need to feed you first before <laughs> that's we very go sweet. out. Um, but yeah, it's stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's really unsexy shit to talk about, you know, opposed to like my friend. I know that they're like, I know a friend. I'm not going to say who is probably in cruising for a bruising with a relationship because <laughs> the way that they are talking about it is like, I've never felt this way before. And um, uh, she and in this and, and I'm, it's hard to get through to her. And, the, and it's like it just sounds so fucking dramatic already. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, this is not going to work. Yeah, out. Right. But man. Yeah. So he, this isn't gonna your work, friend is yeah. hooked. Because on, on hope, yeah, the, mo- the most tragic addiction of all of this mm-hmm. is hope yeah. a lot of times because that will really fuck you over. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Um, the mm-hmm. audacity mm-hmm. of hope. No, but I think it's kind of, I actually think it is sexy when your partner can like knows you so well that they don't take your certain things personally, but they also don't put up with your shit. Like I love yeah. that. I think it's so hot. Do you have that with your uh, man now? Yeah, or yeah. Lady? I'm yeah, sure. I'm very, oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I tried. It just it was, didn't was, work out. I was putting a yeah, what, square peg in a round like hole. Went down and her like licking a stamp. And then you're yeah, like, no, like, did okay. I do it right? And she was like, you could have done it for more than a second. <laughs> um, yeah, I like when like I'm very, I'm a very, I can be very dramatic, and it's nice when, uh, and I'll like be dramatic in a situation, and like I'll apologize later. He's like, yeah, I know, I know you're just being dramatic. It was fine, and I knew about twelve hours right on the dot you were gonna go. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. so sorry, and like it's fine. I don't care. It doesn't yeah. piss me off. I'm like, wow, that's amazing, and it also dissolve. It makes me want to dissolve that behavior because being called out in a way that's not shameful actually paves the way for you to change. Yeah. I also feel like it's, it it makes me want to dissolve when people can predict my patterns. You go, I guess I'm going to change it then. Mm. Don't want to be a hack. Totally. Uh, totally. Yes, there's absolutely no that. For sure. (laughs) And go, "Mm, I'm going to throw something in the mix next time and you won't even know that I'm going to react that way. (laughs) One of the last questions I had for you, we get a lot of emails about 
uh, people entering relationships with their partner. Like, I think it's safe to say that you should not, should, I know should is a mm, dirty word, but entering a relationship with somebody who's an active addiction, if you could like tell, yeah. you know, that's a no, no. Right. I mean, that's like, wh what are your thoughts? Cause you met your wife, you were in, a, you were, you had a couple like really long stints of sobriety and yeah. you met her in those stints. So it's like, you know, it's a foundation, but then I'm like, am I, am I judging you on something that does that matter? I don't know. I don't, I mean, I think it's always, you know, you don't want to, you never want to be in the relationship. I call it like the gatekeeper and key master thing. Or are you the gatekeeper? Are you the key master? <laughs> key Where you master. meet somebody and you're like, oh, this, we're about to doom each other. Yeah, yeah. This is really bad. I totally. definitely, I had one time where I was re actually really good and a girl met up with me and she has since passed. Oh. Um, but like, I could tell we both had it, you know, like, so it was like, like I've had that before where it's been like, this is probably not, but I've never, that's never been something. I've always been somebody who's attracted to someone with their shit together more than me. Cause I just can't, you know, two drowning people can't save each other. Mm. Right. Um, so I would say that that's always not good, but I, th I find a lot of the times that people who, like who are attracted to that either because they want to do it themselves or um, and this happens, I think, a lot with women. They there's a part of them, even though they say they hate it, there's a part of them that gets off on being this guy's babysitter. Totally. And, yeah. Um, gets yeah, yeah, yeah. off on be and, and probably get, recreating a parent relationship they had. And also they can't fucking. And then if you have a drunk, if you're dating a drunk dude who's drunk all the time, they can't call you out on your shit. Right. So if you were a girl who like uh, has her own problems, if she's like, well, yeah, I made it to that, but I didn't fucking vomit at a mm -hmm. Chili's the other night. And then the guy gets quiet because he knows. So it's like you keep the fuck up around. So the, the, the telescope's never on you. It's like you're too. dating a reality television show. You're like, well, right. my life's not that bad. So I'm doing great. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah. I never thought about that aspect, but it makes sense. Which is actually, sense. I watched the show Summer Out. Now I watch a reality show with my, just like a, a couple like that, a man and Kyle, where I was like, clearly she just, like, she never wants him to get sober because then if she did, it's like, the attention's going to be on her. Mm. You know, like, where it's like one of those things, I think. Yep. Where it's like, well, if I have this baby drunk around all the time. You know? <laughs> it's baby drunk. Oh my God. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank Dan. you for having it's me. It's a great convo. Can you promote your special for everyone? We did it uh, at the top, but do it again. Dance Fatty Dance. I do talk about, we never talk about sex stuff, so I do talk about getting pegged on my wife, by my wife on the special, oh. which, you know, you just have to that's check great. out the special for that. It's, it's, not, it's funny. It's, I don't think anyone thinks this is turned on. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I uh, yeah, I talk a lot about politics, my relationship with my wife, and then a bunch of other, and some recovery stuff. So that's on YouTube, and uh, it'll be on 800 Pound Girls site first, and then all things, and then maybe Norman's YouTube page. I'm not sure, but I'm also on Instagram, Dan St. Germain on Instagram. I put like three, like, like every single one of us, we have to put like three videos out on it every week. I have a YouTube channel. I have a wrestling podcast. I still do wrestle oh, roast. Hell yeah. I love um, wrestling. Which I don't know how much crossover there is for this podcast. Oh, you'd be surprised. That. We got some uh, Skanks fans listening to some us. Some Skanks fans listen to us. Um, uh, yeah. So check that out. If you're a big uh, wrestling fan and, uh, Tell your comedy club to book me. So that's about it. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for being vulnerable with us. That's Eric's feeling today. Yeah. I'm going to throw back <laughs> it's to a vulnerable him. day. I love it. This has been Guys We Fucked, the anti slut shaming podcast. We'll talk to you next Friday. Yeah.